old master roll charger and it gave up the ghost this year and stopped working so I had to go buy another one and that was a nice $3,000 hit actually closer to $4,000 but the um, in the process of rewiring it and getting it you know ready to go I just need um, a temperature probe run I'm going to see if I can get Scott to do that because I need a break in addition our refrigeration was losing losing uh, refrigerant on the refrigerator side and so we've had it recharged and it keeps losing it anyway so it's very very small leak it takes a couple of days for it to um, to go back uh, to, to basically lose um, refrigeration and so I don't know what to do about it <laughs> in all honesty I'm thinking about buying some gauges and a whole bunch of refrigerant and just like putting it in every two days for the cost of what it would be to put a new refrigerator compressor in they wanted forty five hundred dollars nearby to do to do that and I said you know something I an air-cooled one instead of a keel cooled unit and I'm I'm just tired of spending that kind of money so we'll see what happens <clears throat> okay so I've had uh, I've had two of our kind of volunteer crew both Andre and Scott try to debug what I thought was a fairly simple problem with this bow uh, navigation light not working so we've got it all pulled apart here different bulbs at my disposal here I'm reluctant to use this LED because it doesn't have a, a glass um, bulb over top of the LEDs and so if it gets wet it's gonna fail immediately this is the more classic version, uh, an incandescent um, Bay, Bay 15D um, navigation light. I think I'm probably just going to use that. Um, most of the time, we're running the engine, so we don't. We're not too worried about about battery life uh, because the incandescent lights do use a lot more power, materially more power than the LEDs do. And so we have LEDs on our anchor light and things like that, uh, but and our, our tricolor use when we're sailing so again a little bit more uh, sensitive there um, so here's the situation so I pulled this whole thing apart and, st and started looking at the at the at the contacts and I even made a little jumper so, so I could kind of check what's happening and I need 26 volts here and here in order to run the bulb and I'm getting like one so I po popped this particular crimp connector off and here's what I find is the is this is what happens with copper wire when it gets you know, doused in, in salt water more than a few times is it turns brown and starts to corrode. I'm going to try to sand the corrosion off with some wet dry sandpaper because I just don't have a whole lot of wire left to work with and I know from experience that I could chase this insulation back all the way to the thing and it would still be black. All right, so now I've been able to clean this up a little bit. Got some of the r rust off of there, and I'm seeing 27 volts at those at, at at this bare area here, and back here as well. Well, there's negatory on that one. Um, what I found was if I pushed on this wire, then it would give me 27 volts. But if it went back to its normal setting, it kind of went back to one volt, and that's not going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back here. I'm going to cut it. You know, someplace back along where it goes behind this stainless steel plate, and I'm going to solder in some new wires, um, and then and then make sure I get some good anchor shrink wrap on tubing on top of it because that has adhesive inside of it and really will um, uh, waterproof the whole assembly, and then rewire it with new uh, crimp connectors. And so, luckily, I've got enough wire coming out of the stanchion. Uh, to be able to do that. Well, it's a beautiful day in St. Martin, in Dutch St. Martin here in the lagoon. And boy, we had a rough day and night yesterday. <laughs> this was cruising at its best. Um, we just had one thing after the other go wrong. I, I tried to fix the bow light, navigation light that we have that's out, and it turned out that the copper wire they used back 30 years ago when they built the boat was just had rotted away it's just black the copper was black inside the insulation and that means it's pretty much dead you just have to follow it back until it gets until it hasn't had salt water in it 
Um, a lot of times that almost can't be done. It just it seems like it just once it's in there, it wicks all the way through. Um, one of my hella turbo fans um, went dead. Um, those are somewhat disposable. They last about a year, a year and a half. Um, we run them almost constantly when we're on the boat. They just, they never get turned off. Um, so there's that. Um, then we had our high water alarm go off in the, you know, in the middle of the night. That was, that was, that, that was nice that it worked. Um, but then it turned out that the fuse was blown on the, on the bilge pump, which is unusual. So I've got to try to figure out what to do with that. I think the one thing that is going on there is the fuse is definitely quite a bit less than what the uh, bilge breaker is and I'm gonna try to find out what that number is and maybe match it to the fuse um, the, the breakers rated for the wiring of that so it should be good to swap out I'm pretty sure I chose the 15 amp fuse because that's what it said in the uh, maxi puppy um, Jabsco uh, manual that came with our bilge pump um, it's a utility pump and it probably draws somewhere around, I don't know, 10 or 11 amps. But you don't want your fuse blowing and having to trace that back if you've got some sort of an, an emergency issue. And that's what we had last night. We were worried. We could see the boat wasn't sinking. Uh, the, the water was up about 12 inches in the bilge, um, which is, you know, a fair amount. Um, that's what it takes to trip the high water alarm. And then what was the last thing that we had? <laughs> Our refrigeration's been losing um, uh, some amount of uh, R134A, which is pretty safe um, pretty safe uh, refrigerant it's the most recent and modern version um, but we have a very very slight leak in our refrigeration system so we have to add a little bit every maybe you know four or five days not a lot but enough that it that we, we have to stay on top of it anyway just the, those these are the things that happen in the cruising world it's it's the downside of it all I suppose I should have filmed it before I started cleaning it but this bilge pump switch was acting up and it was absolutely covered in oil and what ended up happening was that last year we had a, a leak in our in our uh, turbo for the engine and it dumped a whole bunch of oil into the bilge which we've never really been able to fully get out um, we've tried all sorts of different things to try to cut it down but most of the bilge is totally inaccessible and you know it's just way way down there um, and then uh, so we've, we've we cleaned it once earlier this season we got as much oil out of it as we possibly could we also had probably the other thing that is frustrating is that the the uh, the, the oil that's sold these days the plastic bottles the lids don't seal um, that's great as long as you leave them sitting you know vertically uh, but if you lay them on their sides, they start to leak, which is it's, it's, it seems so ridiculous to me. You've got to you've got to have these simple things work um, in an industrial application, and they don't. Um, and so you end up with like you know we have to store our oil not in the engine room, which is flammable area um, that we don't want it getting in the way. There's no place for it in the engine room anyway. We end up having to lay them down on their sides under under the under the um, galley sole and it's just not a great location but it's the only location we really have and we've had them leak um, they leak into the bilge um, so that oil coagulates and starts to get sticky um, and gooby and then things like float switches don't work so it's probably a good thing to just go and clean them periodically anyway
decide to leave San Martin? I like San Martin. San Martin's fun. It's it really is. Place. This is the Dutch side, just leaving Simpson Bay, Lagoon, airport over here. Not much wind. I think we're gonna we're probably gonna end up having a motor sail most of the way. Best things to pick up, which they could. Hope to get hope, hope a little bit more wind. Right now it's dead. Wondering if you can see this. It's so bright out here tonight. 